it's not easy coming up with different unique intros every week and i'm just not going to do it today uh it's roll to roll i'm benj i'm chase i'm dave and i apologize uh, <laughs> uh today we're, we're still talking about classes moving on alphabetically uh through the book as it's written today we're talking druids uh the druid has evolved a lot since second edition which is the first time I encountered them because it's the first time I played the game. Druids in second edition were dumb because you could get to 12th level and then, or 11th level, and then to gain a level, you had to find the druid of the next level and kill them and take their spot. And then you had to gain the experience to level up again and then find the next level of druid and kill them and take their spot. And then I guess you left a spot open for the next guy to show up and not kill you. So that's cool. Um, third edition, they got rid of that altogether, which, uh, which is good. Uh, fourth edition, they made them strikers, I believe. But here we are in fifth edition. And again, they're, they're pretty powerful characters. Uh, I've seen, I've seen some druids do some pretty cool things. Uh, the, the base druid, uh, there are two in the player's handbook, uh, circles, druid circles, uh, but the base druid doesn't look like they get a lot. Uh, it's very there are a lot of blank lines. Um, at first level, they get uh, their druidic spellcasting, and they also get the secret language of druidic. So you can talk to other druids and leave secret messages for other druids. And they don't teach it to people who are not druids. If you're not a druid, you do not get druidic. Um, they get uh, light armor and medium armor and shields, but they don't use anything made out of metal, which is weird. Um, they've got a specific list of weapons that they're proficient with. Uh, clubs, daggers. Hey, don't daggers have metal in them? Darts, javelins, maces, quarterstaffs, scimitars, also made out of metal. Sickles, <laughs> metal, uh, slings, and spears. I don't want to be a jerk to the people who wrote this, but come on, guys. No metals, no metal. Well, daggers can be made out of rock. Spears can be made out of rock or obsidian. Oh, so now we've got now we've got cave yeah. druids. That's cool. It's a bit of a throwback to second edition where they flat out couldn't use anything metal, so they were like clubs, quarterstaffs, and they slings. Could still, they could but still use that, scimitars in second edition. But then that yeah, but then that dark elf ranger guy came around, and some <laughs> druids were like, "Can we get on that action?" and D and D was just like, ah, oh, fine. You can have scimitars. We'll explain it as it's it's their weapon or whatever. Just sure, go leave us alone, the kids. <laughs> uh, they're automatically proficient with the herbalism kit, uh, and they get proficiency in the intelligence and wisdom saving throws. They prepare and cast their spells just like a cleric does. They have access to all the druid spells, but they have to pick. Uh, a number of spells to prepare each day. I believe it's their wisdom modifier plus their level that they can prepare. Uh, wisdom is their uh, casting stat, so you really want your druid to have a high wisdom. Uh, they, they also get ritual casting, which again means that you can cast a spell that you have prepared that is tagged as a ritual spell uh, without expending a spell slot if you spend an extra 10 minutes waving your arms. Like a crazy person. Uh, then, at second level, they get Wild Shape. And this is pretty much what makes a druid a druid. When you think about a druid, you think about a dude who just turns into other stuff. You can, twice per day, turn into a beast. Uh, and that beast has a maximum challenge rating based on your level. So at second level, when you can get Wild Shape, your maximum challenge rating uh, is one-fourth. So we're talking like... Mice, mice, wolf. mostly mice. A wolf, you know, little stuff. This you're not you're not turning into your beast shape to fight things. You're turning into your beast shape to get around or to scout or something. Um, you're also not allowed to pick anything with a flying speed or a swimming speed, so you're limited to land animals. At fourth level, the challenge rating jumps up to one half. Uh, you can now select things that have a swimming speed, so you can pick a goldfish. Goldfish is like the best thing you can turn into, right? Like nothing bad ever happens if you turn into a goldfish, 
right, Chase? Like goldfish. <laughs> I'm like, not there's nothing going there. Okay. You... No. All right. Um, they give the example of a crocodile because it is slightly hardier than a wolf or a rat and uh, also can swim. And then at 8th level, your maximum challenge rating jumps up to 1. You have no limitations on what you can pick other than a challenge rating of 1 or less. They give the example of the giant eagle because it can fly and it is big. Uh, you can stay in beast shape a number of hours equal to half your druid level rounded down, which is why you don't get beast shape at first level. Uh, so at second level, you can be a beast for one hour. At fourth level, you can be a beast for two hours, and so on and so forth. Um, while you're transformed, your game statistics are replaced by the statistics of the beast. Um, so you, you retain your alignment, your personality, and your mental statistics, but you gain the physical statistics of the beast so this is why a lot of characters a lot of players choose uh, combat oriented you know uh, beasts to turn into because well you you get to be just as smart as you were now how terrifying is gorilla grad i mean come on he's a really smart giant powerful strong being so you can pick a strong body and still have a good brain our druid turns into dinosaurs a lot, and we all know that they traditionally have the, the tiny brains. Uh, when you assume, uh, when, when you transform and assume your beast form, you also assume the beast's uh, hit points and hit dice. When you refer it to your normal form, you return to the number of hit points you had. So this is basically giving you an extra bank of hit points, which is really cool. If you take enough damage that would kill you in beast shape, instead you revert back to your humanoid form, and any extra damage carries over. You can't cast spells, and you can only speak with the capabilities of your beast form because your mouth is different now, and you, your your hands are no longer really hands; they may be paws or talons. So your your uh, spell casting ability is is negated there. Uh, you still get class features and race features. So if you have dark vision. You still have dark vision. You can choose whether your equipment falls off or merges into your body. That way you don't have to worry about like, oh crap, I dropped my magic, you know, leather armor or whatever. You're like you can you can hang on to it. It doesn't provide you any benefit while it's absorbed into your beast form, but when you get knocked out, you'll still be wearing your armor instead of, you know, naked. Uh, you get your ability score improvements as as time goes on, like every other class. Um, and then all the way down at 18th level, you get Timeless Body. So you, you stop aging so much. Um, Druid don't crack, as it turns out. Uh, for every 10 <laughs> years that pass, your body only ages for one year. I believe you... Do you still die at your normal time? You just die looking pretty good? Or do you actually increase your lifespan by a factor of 10 I think you would actually increase your your lifespan based off of that because your your, your body, body ages a year is, ages much okay. slower, yeah, so yeah. You, it wouldn't break down as quick. Yeah. Ask your dungeon master. Your mileage may vary. Exactly. Uh, at eighteenth level, at eighteenth level, you can also cast spells in your beast form. Um, you you can now use your somatic and verbal components. It says you can't uh, provide material components because your materials pouch is merged into your body or on the ground over there. And at 20th level, you can wild shape all you want. Just go nuts. Go nuts. It's that episode of Fern Gully where where uh, Robin Williams' character said, oh, look, it's Darwin's grab bag, because the guy just kept popping into different forms. <laughs> so you can do whatever. Wow, you remembered that. That's, that's special. Man, I am old and have seen a lot of movies. So... <laughs> So at second level, you get to pick your druid circles. Uh, Chase, talk to me about the land. <laughs> I will talk about the land. So as far as the player's handbook goes, druid circles are pretty much broke into two categories. Your, in my opinion, I should say, uh, ranged castery type druid, and then the more melee get your face type druid, which Dave's going to talk about momentarily. Um, but first up, we're going to talk about your more caster style druid, which is the circle of the land. Uh, style druid 
Uh, essentially how they broke it up is Circle of the Land is more um, elemental. So more, you know, rock, earth, wind, water, fire. While the other circle is more actual creatures, more animals, more living life. Uh, which is kind of a cool split of the middle of the druid. But anyway, as far as what you actually get from it, um, at second level you could just get a bonus spell on top of what other spells you would get. Um, additionally, at second level, um, you get a very nice benefit that 5th edition did for pretty much all the caster classes, where you can just do a, um, a, a short rest and get some of your spells back. Which is very nifty because in older editions it was a most casters were a one and done. You get into a fight, shot it all, and then you're like, well, time to sleep. Um, so I'm glad that the caster version of the druid gets the ability to recover those spells as well. It's very nifty. Makes you stay in the game longer. And I mean that in multiple ways, I guess. Um, uh, from there, um, you essentially be kind of uh come kind of clericky and how clerics had uh from an earlier video if you listen to it um how clerics had their domain spells um this druid has their circle spells um which is spells that they just have always ready to go all the time depending on uh what land you are actually good with and there's a bunch of different varieties um i think in total uh you have arctic coast desert forest grassland mountain swamp and the other word I don't say. Um, it has under and something about whether it is light and or dark. And it's the underdark. You can say underdark. We're not going. No, I just I don't talk about it. <laughs> uh, moving on. Um, but yeah. He had a bad experience there. there once. I did. <laughs> Multiple times. I've even DM'd that place with bad experiences. But anyway. Um, uh, you get spells according to your... Where, 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 where's your home, bro? Well, you know, you, what you know. What you're familiar with. Um, so just as like an example to help that make sense for someone who doesn't have the player's handbook right in front of them. So say that you were a druid from the frozen tundra up north and you're from the Arctic, or I guess the frozen tundra down south, I guess, you know, with you know what? it can be either way. Ask your dungeon master, your mileage may vary, where are the poles of your planet? Yeah, exactly. Long story short, where it's cold, the Arctic, um, your spells go accordingly to that. So you have like sleet storm, ice storm, cold of cold. Hey, Things that make sense. It's cold. I'm used to doing those. Um, and then you have like your complete polar opposite. So you have like your desert where you get to create food and water because it's a desert. You need to know how to survive there. <laughs> um, you also get some of the um, like hallucinatory terrain because, you know, it's a desert. You hallucinate, I guess. That makes sense. It's so hot. Mirage, um, bro. Mirage. Yeah, there you go. You also get insect plague, wall stone, stuff like that. So yeah. Anyway, there's spells that go accordingly to, you know, what you like. But what do you get um, for the underdark chase? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> chase, show me on the character sheet where the bad drow touched you. Everywhere. <laughs> uh, but because it was asked, and it is a god awful place. You might want to know what someone from such a place might have. Um, they have things like spider climb and web and stinking cloud and insect plague because that's the kind of place it is. So that's all I'm going to say about it. Moving on. Um, at 6th level, you get land stride. In my opinion, it, this isn't that great of an ability, honestly. Um, especially for a druid who can, even though you're not uh, specializing in B-shape, you could just B-shape and this wouldn't really be an issue for you pretty much anymore uh but anyways essentially you just never have to worry about difficult terrain um is is a long story short of that ability um there's one extra where um in addition you have advantage on saving throws against plants that are magically created or manipulated uh yeah because that comes up so often i mean i hate to say it but the example from the player's handbook is probably the only time you'll see that with the entangle spell um but anyway land stride you don't worry about that kind of stuff it doesn't bother you um, you are one with nature, um, which leads to your 10th level ability, which is nature's ward. Um, this one, I guess could, could come up again. I just don't think this is a great thing you get. Most of the stuff, I'll be honest with you. Most of the, the cool stuff from this circle comes from the spells I mentioned earlier, um, being a castery class. Um, but anyways, the 10th level ability is you're just, a, uh, you can't be charmed or frightened by elements or fey. Um, and you're immune to poison and disease. The uh, poison and disease is kind of nice. Um, 
but you know you could just uh, play. A hey man, if you're going to the Feywild, too. like that's baller. <laughs> yeah, if you go to an alternate dimension of reality, sure, I guess so. Like, I guess that's hey, true. You know, if you, go, if you, go to you any, know what? You know you what counts as Fey? Lines. You know what counts as Fey? Gnomes. You know what counts as Fey? I think elves. They have Fey ancestry. Elves. Elves so fey. yeah, like you get you get you there can't you be charmed by an elven spellcaster like that. that. That's a thing. Now that kind of ward sounds like it's purpose built for the underdark, because you can't be charmed <laughs> yeah. or frightened by <laughs> a drow, and their not nasty drow poison doesn't work on you. Yeah. So there you long. go, Chase. That's pretty you great. Can blame, if you, you want to go down the underdark, be a druid. On. You'd be okay. Blame Dave for us moving on. All right. Anyways, I mean, I'm just trying not to lowball an ability. ability. Nope. You know, moving on. When you reach level 14, <laughs> creatures of the natural world sense your connection to nature and become hesitant to attack you. Um, honestly, I kind of think this should just been a thing for druids. Period. I would um, agree with that. Yeah. But they put it, but they put it on a circle of the land because why not? Um, but essentially, anytime probably I'm that the 14th really, level. Like <laughs> you're talking high yeah, level like, play here. I, I mean, it could be 14th level for the base druid. I wouldn't have cared, but it just, it just seems like... Anyway, the ability. When a beast or plant creature attacks you, that creature must make a wisdom saving throw against your druid spell save DC. On a failed save, the creature must choose a different target or attack misses automatically. Um, yeah, I mean, this to me, this ability is just something a druid should naturally have. You are, for all intents and purposes, a being that is literally tied to nature, and nature is tied to you. Um uh, if 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 a pack of wolves comes out of the forest and it's like, oh, we're going to murder him, you should be able to be like, hey, guys, no, you're not. And the wolves should be like, okay, druid, you kind of own this place. And walk away. should just be a thing. But anyway, um, that's the ability. Um, again, in my humble opinion, the, the main reason that you would take this circle of druid um, is for the additional spells and to be and be taking a back seat on the I'm going to cast more type of druid than getting in there. Um, but my favorite circle I'm actually going to toss off to Dave um, because I like to get in there. So Dave, please tell everyone about how you should play a druid with a circle of the moon. I would be happy to tell people that they should play a druid, except I'm not telling them how to play anything because they can choose for themselves. But you should play the circle of the moon. So, if the Circle of the Land is your Spellcaster Druid, the Circle of the Moon is your Wild Shape Druid. All their stuff is centered on Wild Shape. Um, so, when you first take it at level 2, you can use Wild Shape as a bonus action instead of an action. Um, the baseline Wild Shape, you actually have to use an action to assume the shape. So, you can't shift and then immediately start attacking, because you've got to shift and then wait. Which is why you should probably do it before combat. But you can only do it for an hour, so you can't. So, anyway, you... You essentially get to shift for free. Um, and then the other little bit of that, it's really cool. While you're in Wild Shape, you can use a bonus action to expend a spell slot to regain 1d8 hit points per level spell slot extended. That's really good because that lets your Wild Shape last longer. And because you're Circle of the Moon, you're not going to be casting spells as actively. Um, the way I would... I also... Go ahead. I was just going to say, also at lower levels... It's awesome because you're healing more than most healing spells that level are going to do anyway. Yep. I mean, a D8 is what Cure Wounds does. It's basically yeah. saying you can cast Cure Wounds on yourself anytime you want. By just you burning just spell slots, bonus, yeah. You don't get the bonus hit points from your Wisdom score like you would if you were to just cast a spell. But you're basically allowed to Cure Wounds on yourself anytime yeah. you want as a without bonus action. A spell without being a spell, yeah. Yep. It's really good. Um, so also at level 2, you get, uh, really the big reason to go Circle of the Moon is Circle Forms. Um, it basically changes the restrictions on, on Wild Shape. So, as Ben said, normally when you first get Wild Shape at level 2, it's a max CR of 1 quarter. Um, Circle Forms raises that to 1. You ignore the max CR column of the B-Shapes table. But you still have to abide by the other limitations. You still can't take anything that flies or swims. Um, but that bumps your CR up quite a bit. And starting at 6th level, you can transform into a beast with a challenge rating as high as your druid level, divided by 3, rounded down. That caps out at CR 6 at level 18. Um, unless you're going into epic level play and things like that. Well, uh, which is really anymore. cool because 
at CR6, you can get some really good beasts. Um, the other thing is, for the for the wild shape, I know I was talking about doing a druid with Chase a while ago, and we were going through and looking at it. Uh, it's not mentioned in the rules, but we kind of decided a house rule, and of course your mileage may vary, that the druid can only transform into beasts he has seen or encountered before. Otherwise, how is yeah. he going to turn into a T-Rex if he's never seen a T-Rex? He's like, I want to turn into a big lizard thing. He's going to end up looking like the derpiest T-Rex ever because he doesn't know what it looks like. <laughs> he just turns into a giant Barney. Pretty much. I mean, he wouldn't, he wouldn't um, know what, what a T-Rex was. He wouldn't have a concept. He'd be like, I would yeah. like to turn into the stuff of nightmares that is also <laughs> a beast. Um, no, you don't. I mean, so that, that house rule does make sense. I don't object yeah. to that house rule because that's also how the polymorph spell works. Right. Um, so the next step is at level 6 you get Primal Strike. So any attacks in beast form count as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. Which is good because otherwise at that point being in beast form and going melee wouldn't be as useful because you'd start running up against things that your attacks couldn't hit or couldn't damage. Right. Well, I mean, it makes sense because 5th edition is set up to where you start finding at least some magical items around level 5. So yep. It's, it makes sense. Uh, level 10, you get Elemental Wild Shape. So you can spend two uses of Wild Shape at the same time, turn into an Air, Fire, Earth, or Water Elemental. Um, having not looked at the Monsters Manual closely, I can't speak to how it's powerful good. the Elementals are. They're yeah, good. but good. as I assume Chase would say, they're good. Um <laughs> Uh, good. On top of attacks, they also normally get a special ability special to their own. Like the air elemental can just push crap 10 feet away and knock it prone and stuff like that. Fire elementals can occupy the space of other characters and set them on fire. Like, yep. nice. oh, you're standing there? I'm going to give you a hug. And then yeah. your your top level ability for Circle of the Moon and the, in my opinion, second reason to take this is level 14 you can use the Alter Self spell at will, which is really good because Alter Self lets you do some really cool stuff. Let me grab it. We're all turning to it. We're all yep. turning to it. So it's well, a second I mean, level I... spell. You can you can assume a different form. Um, you can do some cool things like you can gain aquatic adaptation, so you can breathe underwater and you gain a swimming speed, which you could do with the beast form anyway, but this way you can still look like you. If that matters, well, um, you can change well, you your. Can still cast spells. That's yeah, the, that's the you can still cast spells. Uh, you can change your appearance. So you can look like someone different, um, or you can give yourself natural weapons: claws, fangs, spines, whatever. Well, um, so one of the coolest things I saw for that is someone that was a human made themselves look like a tiefling because they gave themselves like ram horns and they gave themselves like goat legs, but were completely and utterly just a human that became a dru or a druid that did it. So. And use that for a role-playing thing to get somewhere they kind of shouldn't have. Yeah. So that's that's the Circle of the Moon, or as I like to call it, the Good Circle. Really, they could have just called <laughs> that the Druid and left the Circle of the Land nonsense out. But anyway. I hate um, to say it, but yeah. <laughs> so, well, wow, here we go with our opinions, I guess. Let's go right into that. <laughs> How so, do you guys uh, feel about your circles? You like a circle in the sky? Or you like a circle in the ground? <laughs> Uh, so, when we're talking uh, races for the Druid, what are we looking at? Obviously, I say Wood Elf, because Wood Elf, um, yeah. they, they get a bump to Wisdom, they get a higher land speed, and they're an Elf. I'm going to say the same things that I said about Clerics, because you want a Wisdom modifier, and it's a Divine casting class, again. Um, so, you're cool with the Dwarven Doodad? Uh, yes, I'm actually okay with the Dwarven Doodad because he could be Circle of the Land and be from, uh, you know, the mountains. Or... But not under him. Not under him. Not under... You don't... You can't... <laughs> you don't want to be Mr. Underhill? I don't... Okay. He only lives yes. in the, on the surface of the mountain. He doesn't go into the mountain. That's bad. Right, you Never. don't... No. Never. There's you nothing under go the in the mountain. Um... Have you guys not watched Lord of the Rings, Gandalf Orgy? You just don't go there. <laughs> just, you, well, I mean, they didn't know that there was a giant, ugly demon down nope, there. But whatever. I mean, it's, it's cool. Uh, Half-elf, wood elf. Uh, I would even say, for those of you who want to roleplay, like, grab a forest gnome. 
they're not going to be you're not going to have your you're not going to have your first level plus three bonus to wisdom if you're uh, if you're buying doing point buy or doing the standard array but I mean, I guess it would be uh, funny to see a little forest gnome turn into a giant earth elemental and murder someone. That, that kind of would thing. be good. I would, I would enjoy that very much. Or a giant crocodile, or uh, a triceratops, or yeah, that would be. Yeah, pick your poison. You know what? I would actually, I would actually, if I were playing a gnome, I would make my giant earth elemental still be a small creature. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd be, yeah. I'd be like a bowling ball. Like that would be <laughs> that's how, that's how I would do it, and they already talk to the animals, so that's cool. I mean, I'm I'm just trying to. I watched something today on gnomes, and they were like, "Yeah, you can be anything you want. Statistically, like you want to be a wizard, but you can be anything." And they were like, "Yeah, rock gnome, eldritch knight, go." And I was like, eh, "Okay," but a forest gnome would make an okay druid, and if you started at higher levels. Where you already had your your ability score increases, you could have your decent-ish wisdom already out of the gate. I mean, heck, if you're doing roll for stats, who knows? You might have became good to begin with. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, you, the, there are there are sixes on your dice. That, that that can happen. Man, I'm stuck with this image of like this little rock with arms and legs just flying across the map, murdering yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> There's something I saw. It was. I'm old and have seen a lot of movies. Um, yeah, beyond that, I mean, it's it's going to be the, the the same ones. Humans do everything. You can do it with a human. Um, half elves do everything better, so you could do that too. But I'm I am fine with the the hill dwarf dwarven doodad, as as Dave mentioned. Do we want to talk druid spells like what they've got that's cool? Uh, or... Don't they get a what is it meteor storm or whatever? <laughs> I don't know. Let me turn my pages. Get to my spell list. It wouldn't surprise me. They the druids are basically blasters. Like they get a lot of really cool. They are divine like, blasters. They don't get meteors. Meteor swarm. They get. Uh, they get they sunbeam. Get fire. Sunbeam. They get firestorm. They get sunbeam. They get Sun, sunburst. Sunbeam is insane, and I hate that clerics don't get it, because it is an undead murdering like. You're just a, oh, an wow. undead they murder get, bot, like, for a druids long time. Druids get true resurrect? Wow. Hey, guys, druids get true resurrection. I don't yeah. That's right. That's crazy. They also get cold I mean, lightning, like which has been, always been one of my favorite spells. They also get reincarnate, which I am a big fan of, because you could ruin another player's day. I mean, their day's <laughs> already <laughs> ruined if you have to cast reincarnate on them, but <laughs> you can, like... You can, you can turn it that just door door into an elf. Like, ah, oh, it's so good. I mean, depending on what you come back as, you you might actually make their day. You don't know. Yeah, they they. You know what? They might have been a self hating dwarf. You don't know. Yeah, um, yeah it could have could it be a thing. Goodberry um, is super popular. <laughs> Find traps. Hold person. One of my personal favorites. Low level. Low level murder spells. Um. Call lightning, lots of nature stuff. Blight is another big one. Dominate beast, in case you know you want to tell them what to do. Polymorph for literally no reason. Like they do not need polymorph. They get they it. They do not need polymorph at all. Uh, they also get shape change at ninth level. One. Yeah, I mean we can talk about like ninth level. So foresight is insane. I don't know if you guys have ever read foresight, but for eight hours you get advantage on all the things. Well, yeah, because you've like, seen everything that's going to happen. You, you, you get, you get, you're like, you're seeing six seconds into the future, like you just, you just, you, oh, it's it's crazy. You you literally get advantage on all the things. Um, feeble mind is a fun one. Control weather, control water. Regenerates nice if somebody lost an arm. Which can happen in my campaigns. Yeah. Yeah. So I mentioned it. I've, I've seen a guy lose a leg. So to, to rats, you know, rat swarms are dangerous. And I, I brought his leg back with us. God, it's so dumb. Just call him Hop Along. All the cure spells they get: uh, cure wounds, mass cure wounds, uh, healing word, 
Move Earth is kind of cool if you need a bulldozer. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Awaken is an interesting spell because you get to find yeah. some kind of a beast or plant. If they have no intelligence or three or less, they gain intelligence, can speak a language you know, and they're charmed by you for 30 days or until you try to harm it. So you just get a free follower who can be a yeah, beast and or that's, a plant. Yeah, that's, that's been a point cool. of contention this, this Actually, edition, um, is that the ranger gets the beast master subclass, yeah. and the druid doesn't get their animal companion like they used to. And yeah, you can. It's called Awaken. It's a fifth level spell. You can do it as soon as you hit level nine. Yeah. You can get it. And it's charmed by you for... 30 days. Uh, 30 days. Or until you try to harm it. Which one would those 30 you, days, druid. it gets to make a decision whether it wants to hang out with you some more, or just... Just wander off. Just wander back into the woods. Yeah. Just do not awaken a Venus flytrap. Don't do it. <laughs> Generally, don't all awaken a plant because it can't move around and follow you. Look, so. all I gotta say is Chris Perkins himself said one of the favor one of his favorite NPCs he ever cr created was an awakened blizzard. So there you go. I mean, what's it gotta be like to be like one day you're feed and breed, and the next day you're like, oh, you know, who you're am contemplating I? your own mortality. What yeah. do I want? <laughs> More than likely, they're just More like, likely. can I go back to feed and breed? I hate yeah, this. Exactly. I those, hate thinking about things. <laughs> thinking is those not Those lights in the sky, they move. How do you, yet, how do, you do the this all place. the time? How? <laughs> <laughs> calculus. Why do we do that? Just just calculus why. That's it. Full yeah. stop calculus. right there. <laughs> why? That thought, that thought <laughs> can just stop right there. Um, anyway, if we, we can be fun with some fun spells. Yep. If you want to look at backgrounds real quick, the Hermit and the Outlander both seem like they're pretty tailor-made for the Druid. Yeah, hands down. Yeah. No argument. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can, again, I encourage you to go off script and make that Druid that's an entertainer. He turns into a, you know, <laughs> like a giant <laughs> dancing bear or something. Like, Or he's or he's the gladiator, the variant entertainer, and he turns into oh, a God. giant mauling bear. <laughs> I had someone okay. play the uh, mm. urchin as a background for a druid before because they were a druid from the woods. They got exiled. Now they're in a city and have no idea how to... What, what's this make money you speak of? Yeah, there's no urban druid. There's there's an urban ranger, but there's no urban druid. I mean, I guess there are a lot I mean, of cities in the Underdark. I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Chase, what uh, does drow do to you? Yeah. Seriously? Uh, all right, Internet. Quick, quick branch off from druids. I hate the Underdark. I have tried to run the Out of the... Was it Out of the Abyss pre-made? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I Out of the so. Abyss. Out of the yeah. Abyss. Twice. I have tried to run it twice. And it just... Uh, that's just... Uh, uh, it's just a horrible place. And on that note, hey Dave, where else can they find us? <laughs> Not in the Underdark. Never. Fair again. enough. You can find us on the SoundClouds and the YouTube. We're also on Facebook, and we are on our own website, rolltorollblog.wordpress.com. All right, and until, I guess, next Monday, I'm Benj. I'm Chase. Don't go to the Underdark. I'm Dave. The Underdark's not really that bad. Keep, keep, on, keep on rolling. In, in the Underdark or not in the Underdark. I, I don't know. <laughs> Just keep on... Keep on rolling.